people don't recognize what they're good at because it's so easy. And when something is so easy, you just assume everyone else can do it. Of course, it's kind of shocking to you to be like when people come back and say, that was so beautifully done. That was like amazing. That was the best part. Of course, you're like, what are you talking about? Welcome to the Certified Badass Online Marketing Podcast, where being a badass has less to do with what you wear and what music you listen to and everything to do with whether you've got the thriving online business of your dreams. I'm your renegade thinking Harvard Law grad turned online entrepreneur host, Bobby Clay. In my years building my thriving business, the most important lesson I've learned is that being a badass online marketer isn't about secret strategies or ninja tactics. It's about doing the basic stuff right and showing the F up. So each week here on the show, you'll get clear, easy to execute guidance on how to build your online business and a swift kick in the ass or two to make sure you're getting it done. Hey there, welcome to episode 180 of the Certified Badass Online Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Clink. And I'm excited for today's show because it's the third in a series that I'm doing. It's the last episode in this series where we're focusing on understanding your strengths and understanding how those strengths will impact your business and how you should use them kind of in building your business and all of the other things. So two weeks ago, I had a solo episode, which was uh, called, uh, you know, do you know your core competencies, which was about kind of how you need to know these things. Last week, I had Lisa Robin Young on to talk about your creative entrepreneur type and how that affects things. And today, I have my friend, Anna Nelson. I call her Anna Y. Nelson sometimes because that's her website address is AnnaYNelson.com. Uh, and if you're looking, Anna has two ends. We'll have all the links in the show notes. Now, she's someone who has been in my world, I guess, for about a year and a half. We met about a year ago in person at, um, you know, kind of a fulfillment event I was doing. She had purchased something through me. Now she's joined my coaching program. So she's in my world, has been a part of my world for, for a long time. She is a Gallup certified strengths coach. So what she does is she helps entrepreneurs understand what their unique set of strengths are, but also she coaches them on their teams, et cetera. And she kind of helps you take that information and then figure out, okay, knowing that, what does that tell me about the kind of business I should build, where I need to go get help, where I'm, I'm really strong, what I should double down on and things like that. And so that's what she does. And in this episode, we, we go into all of this. If you don't know the Gallup strengths or the Clifton strengths, the problem is they keep rebranding it, but it's the Gallup strengths or the Clifton strengths. If you don't know them, it, it's my favorite assessment out there. There's a lot of different assessments, but this one I got more out of than anything else. And as I mentioned in the interview, I first took the test back when I when I enrolled in B-School and Marie Forleo, I think, suggested it. But I kind of took it and then threw it on the shelf. I took it more recently in, you know, once kind of Anna was in my world. And what I did is I actually hired her. Uh, we paid her thousands of dollars to come in and coach me, coach my team, and look at all of these things. And there was a ton of great insight I got out of it because like I figured out some things like, hey, it kind of makes sense that I built the business that I built because it's suited to my strengths. It's suited to my particular mix of all of those things. So there was that happening, but also she coached um, my team and we we worked, looked at it together about how do we fit together? How do we complement each other and all those things? So it's helped on all those scores. So uh, I clearly think the world of her coaching and, and I know how valuable it is. And so I wanted to have her on the podcast. Now, um, in addition, and we talk about this in the interview, in addition to being a, a Gallup certified coach, she has an MBA, she's worked in corporate, she's done a lot of different things. So she has a lot of like expertise and a lot of knowledge that's fantastic. And she shares so much of it in this episode. We talk about kind of, if you don't know what the Gallup Strengths Finder is, kind of what it is, get you an understanding of it why it's different and in my opinion, better than the other kind of personality assessments that are out there. 
how you use that information or how you could use that information to build your business. You know, why shouldn't you just focus on, you know, improving where you're weak and all those things. And then also we kind of talk about my business because she coached me. So I thought it would be useful for her to talk about how she sees me living out my strengths and give you examples of those things to help you kind of grasp, okay, now I'm getting how you can actually use these things. And we talk about something that was really cool that an idea that's that's generated, you know, multiple five figures for us at this point in my business started with something like, that my team saw in this coaching session. And so it led to another kind of one of our product lines that is huge and that I love and I'm, I'm, I'm getting a ton of value out of. So we talk all about that. It is a great interview. You don't want to miss it. Now, before we dive in, this episode is brought to you by my live event coming up in December, Badass Online Marketing Live. And this episode is particularly important because Anna Nelson is one of the speakers. She's going to be talking at the event. You know, she won't have me interrupting her. She's actually going to do a presentation, going to walk the people who come all through this about how do you use this information? How do you kind of take this and use it to build the right business for you, which is something that I'm passionate about. So if you like this episode and you're like, okay, this is something maybe I should learn more about come on, join us over at Badass Online Marketing Live and you'll get more of this. You'll get all this information, et cetera. You can find out more about the event by heading to bobbyclink.com forward slash bomb live. That's B-O-M live. Bobbyclink.com forward slash bomb live. Now, without further ado, here's my interview with Anna Nelson. Welcome to the show, Anna. I'm excited to have you here talking about this topic too. So welcome. I'm, I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm excited, Bobby. (laughs) A little nervous because you're so good at communication and we're going to talk about that. So I hope I can communicate with you. I'm a little bit nervous that a little bit of your like dry wit will come out and, you know, people will hear you kind of that little bit. It's almost to the point of sarcasm, but I'm not sure you don't actually get there. But so like I did an intro, um, but how would you introduce yourself? kind of to people and to my audience, what would you say, um, you know, other than that you're a Gallup certified, what is it, Gallup certified strengths coach? I guess I at least get that part right, right? You get that part right, yes. <laughs> you you get most of it right. I have a tough time saying strengths for some reason. It, 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 it throws me, but um, so how would you introduce yourself and kind of the journey you've been on as an entrepreneur? Well, I guess, well, oh boy. Um, I would say that, especially in the online space where we talk about like, find your superpower and find what you're good at. It has definitely been a journey for me and discovering what my strengths are definitely helped me focus more on like, oh, this is the type of business I should build. And so I... And, and recognizing like what I've done all of my life, motivating and inspiring people to do what they're really good at is literally what I do. <laughs> and now I can build a business around it and, and giving myself permission to build my business around what I'm really good at versus looking at other people in the online space, especially and being like, oh, that's what they're doing. I should also do that. And it's like, no, I shouldn't do that because I would be, a, I would, I fail at it. So I, what I do is I am a Gallup certified strengths coach. And in a way it sort of uh, not gives me credibility for what I do naturally, but it gives me more uh, knowledge for what I already do. And it gives it's what I love is it's more of a tool that I can use to help others. And then I'm just really excellent at guiding people into figuring out what they're good at. Yeah. And, and so listeners, you should, you should know, Anna is like not someone who just came into the online space cold. Um, she worked in corporate as, what was it, as a project manager and, and, you know, worked your way up. Was it at Patagonia? Is that where you worked your way up into like actual working at corporate? Is that what you did? I, so I started out, my corporate career was in financial services, doing marketing and client services. And then one of my dreams had been to work in, at Patagonia's headquarters. Like ever since I was in high school, I was like, I really want to work at Patagonia. And so I quit my very good paying job right before, like in 2006, while finishing up my MBA to get a job folding t-shirts at 
um, Patagonia's retail store on Newberry Street in Boston. And I networked my way to the top. And ultimately, I got a job offer working with um, the president and then, um, yeah, the president and the CEO of Patagonia. And I, it was the first time in my life where I pursued actively pursued something that I really wanted and I was handed it. I was given what I wanted and I learned that I had changed along the way that that ultimately wasn't what I wanted. And so, um, yeah, and then it kind of went back to like going back into financial services. The recession happened. I lost my job. I was unemployed for 14 months. It was like, a terrible time in my life. And then eventually I ended up in Minnesota and got a job as a project manager working at marketing at a marketing firm. So that's my, but I mean, look, I think that's an important thing to tell because I think it's important for people to understand that. I mean, you have experience in the business world. You have an Mm -hmm. MBA, you have all those things. And by the way, I know this about you, your number one strength is maximizer, which to me, again, I'm not the coach here on this, but I would say that probably explains why you were able to go from folding t-shirts at Patagonia to getting a job, the job you wanted working in corporate because you were maximizing the opportunities and you were making the best out of every experience. Did I get that kind of right at least? Sort of. I mean, it helps, of course, when you're pursuing a dream to know like, this is what I want and how am I going to get there, right? So yeah, folding t-shirts, that means when the... um, regional manager comes in, I'm talking to her and like letting her know when the corporate, when the buyer comes into the store and and from California, the headquarters, it's like, Hey, how's it going? And like showing all of the things, but like for me, maximizer means taking something. I like to take things that are already good things or people experiences, anything and make them better. Whether it's like in the online space, we're all working on our little freebies that we get to pass out to people or get them on our list. I have looked at people's freebies and if they're like, hey, can you review my freebie? I will sit down and mark it up and I'll be like, hey, here's how you can make it better. And I think sometimes they might be offended at it, but I'm like, no, really, this is better. Or in the coaching realm, looking at someone and being like, you're already really great. How can we make this better? How can we make you better so that you can actually go out and, and live a life where you're just happy every day? And that's what a maximizer does, which is good and bad all at the same time. Okay. So now we've been using words like maximizer and we need to step back though. So, um, listeners, uh, I, so a lot of us have heard about this thing called the Gallup strengths. And I, I think it was called strengths finders at one point, but it's either that or it's a test, an assessment you can take. And I was first introduced to it candidly back in 2018 when I took B school. I think Marie Forleo suggested you take it and just get your top five strengths. I took it and I got to be honest with you, I think I got them all, but then I just put it on a shelf and did nothing with it. So why don't you, for listeners who haven't heard of it or don't maybe have heard a little bit about it, what is the Gallup Strengths Test or the Gallup Strengths Finders Assessment? Yeah, I think they're calling it like the Clifton. Clifton Strengths. Yeah, Clifton right. Strengths Assessment now. Yeah, exactly. They go through their own rebranding, which is really confusing for us. Um, so the Gallup Strengths Assessment is ultimately a series of, it's like 177 questions and you, yeah, you have 20 seconds to answer them. And it like at the end, you get your results and it lets you know the order in which you get 34 talent themes. So we all have talents, like raw talents. Think of it like a raw diamond. And how it it measures or tells you how you think, feel, and behave in any situation. It doesn't matter where you are. Like how you think, feel, and behave is going to be consistent throughout wherever whatever situation you're in and so what it tells you is like this is how you think feel and behave and here are your dominant talent themes and here are your weak talent themes and what's amazing about it is that it gives you not permission but more like verbiage and confirmation of like this is how I think feel and behave oh yeah I can see glimpses of that in my life And then you can start proactively adding skills and knowledge to the talent theme. So if you think of it going from a raw diamond to a really polished diamond, now you're becoming more and more, quote, valuable because you can charge more. You can just 
have a more rich life because you're actually utilizing your strengths to the maximum capacity. Yeah. Well, and what I love about it, because again, I think uh, people who listen here, I'm sure have heard of the Myers-Briggs. They've heard of um, the Enneagram. Uh, Maybe they've heard about DISC, which I talk about as well. But like all of those, I think... I haven't done the math, but I think the the Myers Briggs has the most potential with sixteen potential results, and it could be that the disc has about that number. But Enneagram, I think, has ten. Whereas nine, nine, nine for the Enneagram. Okay, yeah. Yeah. see, I, I don't even know the Enneagram. Exactly. Everybody tells me what I am. I'm I like, know. Oh. I hate. Yeah, I strongly. Mm. Yeah, it's okay. Look, I don't <laughs> hate any of them. I like all of them because I learn things from all of them. Like when I. When I finally got um, someone really who knows what they're doing and assessed me as an ENFP on Myers-Briggs and you look at it, and by the way, if you look at ENFP, it, it says that's the personality of a performer. <laughs> well, we, we know that's probably about right for me, but you know, it, it's one in 16. Whereas with Gallup, there's 34 different talents put in order from one to 34 which is very different. So I know you've told me this, like how many, how many potential weight, like orders are there? What is, what blows my mind. And every time I say it, I'm like, is that even correct? Am I saying it right? But it's like one in 33 million. The chance of you having the same top five strengths in the same order as someone else is one in 33 million. And, that, and that's just the top five, right? That's just the top five. Exactly. Right. Which, and, and that's what I love about the strengths assessment is that it isn't that if we're the Enneagram, like if you are a three and I'm a three, it just doesn't say anything deep, deeper than that. Right. Whereas this, it's like, if you and I have the same strength, let's pretend both you and I, which I know you don't, but let's pretend we both had maximizer in our top five, your other talent themes affect how maximizer shows up in your life. And my other talent themes affect how maximizer shows up. So Literally, we are not the same. So you can't just walk around saying, oh, I'm a maximizer. I'm a maximizer. And any personality uh, assessment is personal. It's personal to you. Mm -hmm. Like take responsibility and understand how you work. And yeah, if the Enneagram helps you understand more about yourself, great. Then that's awesome. Like we should all try to gain something. If you find out what type of noodle you are and that tells you something about yourself and you learn from that, great. Um, But yeah, well, I mean, what I think is amazing about that, that 33 million number, I mean, think about that for a second. That means that on average, there is, are nine other, if you live in the United States, there are nine other people walking around the United States with your same top five in the same order. And, and that is a pretty stunning thing. And when you think about the fact that, uh, you know, I could probably do the math on the 34, but I would have to go back and really think through how we do this math. But I'm guessing nobody, I mean, the chances that anybody has the exact same order of all 34 is so infinitesimally small that it really is a unique assessment and gives you some unique insight, um, which I think is fine. And to me, I love it. That's why, you know, I'll tell everybody to take the other ones, but I always say take take the the Clifton Strengths, the Gallup Clifton Strengths, uh, just because I think it, I've gotten more insight out of it than the other assessments I've taken. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so we talked about that. Like now, since you help entrepreneurs, how can an entrepreneur use their their strengths, like results? If they take this test, they get the assessment, they get the results. How would they use it in their business? This is what I love about the strengths is that it's in the online space. You know, there are so many people who are like, "Oh, well, everyone else already has this type of business or this." Like your strengths result, you are a unique individual. We like the way that you think, feel, and behave is very different than me. And so both of our businesses look very different. And so if you understand the way you think, feel, and behave and understand on a really deep level how that adds value to other people who don't think, feel, and behave the way that you do, you can then build a business around that. So for you, you have strategic thinking and ideation okay, well, we need people who have have ideas and can think about you're helping other entrepreneurs think strategically about how to grow their business. I would never help anyone that way, but I could turn around and say, hey, Bobby, here's what you're really, really good at. 
And both of us could exchange money, for example, because we're both helping the other person think differently about what it is we want and how to go out and pursue that. Yeah. Well, but actually, like in your like discussion, I thought we should step back because we talked about there are 34 strengths or talents or whatever we call them, but they fall into four. Is it called domains? Is that what they, they yeah. call them? Yeah. So, yeah. And the domains are strategic thinking relationship building, influence, and executing. Kind of what, what is the relevance of the domains and how do they fit in when you're kind of looking at your results here? The relevance is more that you can start to understand, oh, this is just kind of what I'm really good at. So for me, my top domain is relationship building and the domain, the my last domain is strategic thinking. Mm-hmm. And and so the relevance is more for me understanding I and and really appreciating I'm really good at building relationships. I'm really good at that. But then when it comes to building my business, I'm not really good at like thinking creatively about how to go about doing it. So it's important to understand this is what I should be building my business around, relationship building or, you know, coaching people and and doing that. But then when it comes to moving myself forward, so I can actually make money doing what I'm really good at, how do I build in, let's say, an external team of people who think differently than me? So I could go in and sit in a room and be like, I don't know what I should do with my email list, or what am I supposed to say or whatever. And so I need other people who think strategically to say, hey, what about doing this, 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 and this? And I can go out and do the work or now I have two marketing interns who can do the work for me. (laughs) But I need someone else to help guide me so that ultimately I can just have the business that I do want doing what I'm really good at. Right. And again, I think it's a funny thing. And this is why I like, you know, I hope that that listeners are going to get this from this episode. When we get to like, since you coach me on my strengths, we'll talk about them a bit more. But it's kind of interesting because like you have found, hey, you need to be in a room with people to help you with strategic thinking. I mean, I don't really need that. I, I've got strategic thinking. What I need, my biggest thing, and, and listeners, this will probably not be a surprise if you've been here. My weakest area is executing. Now, I have a couple of, top, of them in my top 10, but then like the, the rest of them are all basically towards the bottom. <laughs> So what that means is I'm great at having ideas. I'm great at having inspiration. I'm great at all these other things, but sometimes the follow through is what I need help with. And so that's where like, I have to have a team. I need to have those people on my team to help me do that so I I can do it. Um, And again, listeners, this is the thing, we'll get to this a little more like when we get to my thing, but I honestly was kind of surprised because when people think about me, in the space, one of the things they say is that I'm really good at building relationships, at making people feel, you know, whatever. And that is actually my third. It, it, it's my third kind of domain after strategic thinking and influencing. And it's it's an interesting thing because I think, and we chatted about this, Anna, when we were, you were coaching me. I mean, I think what it comes down to is like, I'm good at making people feel seen in a sense because of my strength in influencing. I think it's my influencing that has helped me kind of do that. But I think the other thing is what I've said is like my relationship building, if I remember, I don't have my whole report in front of me. It's like, they're just all kind of between 10 and 20. So it's like, they're all pretty good. There's, they're not, there aren't any that are really weak. So I'm, I'm proficient at all of those things. And it's not exactly like that, but it's kind of like that. Um, And so I think these things you figure out, but, I do want to talk about something here because you touched on it and I touched on it. You talked about, hey, I need to like find people to help me with the stuff that is not my strength. Why shouldn't we try to improve the things that are our weaknesses, like the things that are at at the bottom of our list? I think it depends on which stage you're at, right? Just in life. Like it's one thing to reckon. I think for me, for the longest time, I was like, I must be really bad at business or like, what's wrong with me? Like, it's really hard to think like, there must be something wrong with me if other people are able to do these things that I'm just struggling with. But then recognizing, oh, this is just something that I'm not that good at. And so if you have to, especially if you're DIYing your business, let's say in the beginning, 
then you can at least say, it's not that there's something wrong with me. It's just that I don't think this way. So how can I help myself get through this until I'm at a point where then I can either hire out or um, maybe you pivot your whole business model. I don't know. But there's no point in getting better at your weaknesses because maybe you'll get a little bit better, but you're never going to be as good at, at your weaknesses as someone else who has it in their top strength. Like I could, I, I'm really bad at uh, like analyzing numbers and spreadsheets and all sorts of things. And yes, I could read all of the books on statistics, like analyzing data, how to do all of this, but I'm never going to be as good as someone else who can just look at a spreadsheet and be like, boom, this is what these numbers are telling us. And you would like, there, why? I, it'll just be a struggle every day. And life is hard enough. <laughs> I already struggle enough in my day. I don't want to struggle more. So it's just good to be aware so that when all of a sudden you're kind of doing something that you're not good at, you can be like, oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, this is not really what I'm good at. And you can like push on through, but get back to working in your weaknesses or in your strengths. Yeah. And again, this is those, this is that thing that we talked about before, before we hit record here, where I've joked for a long time that like, um, planners, I I have an obsession with planners. I have bought every different one. And, and, you know, in the space, people talk about Michael Hyatt's full focus planner. And then I don't know, there's a bunch of other ones people talk about and they're like, Oh, this is the best thing. It's the thing. And I've tried all of them. And for a long time, I was banging my head against the wall because again, everybody is saying, Oh, you got to use it. You got to use it. You got to use it. And, and, at some point, finally, I just said, this is dumb. This is not how my brain is, is wired. I don't know. I have no idea which strengths it is that don't work. That, but it, my brain doesn't work that way. And in a lot of ways, me admitting that and like literally um, so that people know, and you know, if you're watching the video, you, know, you maybe have seen me do this before, but you know, my show notes or my notes I take like, you know, for, for episodes, it's like a Sharpie with some bullet points. That's what I do. That's what I do to, to, to speak to the thing, et cetera. And I'm much better doing that than I ever would be like putting detailed notes and doing everything and, and accepting that was freeing, I think. And I think that's the point you were making is that, you know, why, why bang your head and make your life difficult <laughs> when you don't have to? Yeah. And I think, I think, that's what marketing's all about, right? Like we're all standing out on a corner saying, hey, here's a new way to do this thing. And including with planners, like I'm not good at planning either, I, even though I was like a project manager. But um, although I was taking something that was like a disaster and making it better. So then I excelled in that way. But like your least dominant theme is executing. But, and I feel like executors would be really good at taking a planner and putting a plan in place and doing the stickers and mapping things out and getting the Excel spreadsheet. And like, I can't do that. But if someone says, here's a plan, I'll stick to the plan. Absolutely. And same with you, like you're still able to run a really, uh, high, like well-functioning business. You're making money, even though you don't have the latest and greatest planner. And so, yes, it is freeing to be like, I don't have to get the full focus planner, but recognize that other people do need the full focus planner if that's the planner, right? And that's okay. We don't have to feel bad. That's where I think comparison is such a terrible thing because we start thinking like, oh, everyone else in this room has a planner and they love it. Well, maybe you're surrounded by a bunch of executors instead of just like a whole bunch of strategic thinkers instead. Right. Well, and it's this funny thing that like, you know, and we're going to touch on this when we get to kind of your coaching me and, and we can talk about this. I guess we can kind of pivot to this now is it's this thing that everybody is looking at other people who have like, who are telling them this is the kind of business you should run. You should, you should have courses or you should have a membership or you should be doing this. And one of the big themes in the online space that a lot of us are being told is you got to get out of one to one-on-one work. You got to stop doing one-to-one mm -hmm. work. You got to stop doing that. And the funny thing was that after you coached me and coached my team and they saw my strengths, they were like, well, Bobby, maybe you ought to do VIP days. Maybe you ought to do one-on-one -on -one work with people because that will fill you up. And it has. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's this example of where, you know, I'm building a business against the grain because it's what suits my personality. And so I think that's a, a great lesson that everybody needs to take from this. And like, like you're talking about the planners. 
I go in rooms with people and I don't have Mark, I don't have pens. So, I mean, I, I could, couldn't show you, but I'll go into rooms like in my mastermind with James Wedmore. And like, there are people who have like to take, like for notes during the session, have like eight or 10 different colors of pen. I'm like, I got a pen, <laughs> you know, I got a pen. Do I need more than that? And again, it's just it, different strokes for different folks. And I love knowing that. And so I love that you said that, um, that, that people need to kind of like, I don't know the word you use, but give themselves permission or give themselves grace or whatever we want to say. And, and you don't have to do what everybody else does. Um, so I get the point of not fixing your weakness. Now let's talk about me because everyone wants to hear about me. <laughs> but, Absolutely. I mean, more, but more importantly, I mean, I think it's a good, um, I think it's a good example because you coached me on this stuff and you coached my team. And it was really interesting to me. And, and here's why. Like you're getting me out of some like, like bad habits of language. For example, I said, like I would say something like, well, I'm really good at public speaking because I've been doing it for 27 years. And then you said, and, and I said, because I was a, a lawyer and a litigator. And you said, well, maybe you chose that because that's what you're good at. And I was like, oh, oh, oh wow. Um, and I think a lot of people don't think that way. Um, and so can, can you talk about that a little bit about kind of how you've seen it? Because I think you have insight, having coached me, having seen my strengths, but also you're in my coaching group. So you've seen me, you've been part of my community, you see how I'm running my business. So like help people understand how, like in my case, my strengths and my business kind of make sense as an example. Mm -hmm. I think like uh, your third strength is communication and under, cause you have your full 34 results. So it's very, very specific to you. And um, it's just so clear once you actually have the verbiage to be like communication driven by your talents, you enjoy, and you enjoy amusing people. Um, you probably tell stories or jokes. You're apt, you are apt to offer compliments Instinctively, you attract listeners with your stories, presentations, lectures, or speeches. You routinely seek opportunities to talk about what you think, feel, or have experienced. And it's like, okay, just those two bullet points alone, you can see that clearly throughout your business with your podcast, your Facebook Lives, your groups that you're in. And, and that's just one strength. And so even building what you're doing for your upcoming event, it's using your communication strengths, right? So now when you understand, oh, communicate, like you're, you are able to break down difficult to understand concepts into easy to understand language for people like me who might be like, I know I need to learn this, but this is like really complicated. And I can watch one of your presentations and I'd be like, oh, that makes total sense. Okay. Now I can go out. Right. So like, and you just do it naturally. You're not even trying. So of course you were a lawyer because you can like take all of this legal concept stuff and then just make it really easy. Yeah. And, okay. and like, think about your legal templates. Like I was first introduced to you because I needed a privacy policy for my website. I remember like there's some guy I heard on Amy Porterfield's podcast. Like he said something about something. And so watching your videos on the just how to execute that was so it, like, it was so beautifully done and you made it so easy to understand. So someone like me who doesn't understand legal jargon could literally do it myself. And you did such a beautiful job doing it. Well, and, and let me dig down on that because I think there's a point that I want to make on that piece, which I want to tease out a bigger point for people here. Uh, because that's something it took me forever to get like with my legal templates. Like to me, the, the explanation videos, Oh, like, yeah, well, I got to do those. Those are just obvious or whatever. But I had so many people afterwards tell me those are literally their favorite part. And it just seems so obvious to me to do that. And I think there's a string here, which is when we're living in our strengths, we don't even realize that other, that this doesn't make sense to other people this way. Is that something you see with a lot of people when they're just kind of in their strengths, they don't recognize that everybody doesn't think this way? Absolutely. People don't recognize what they're good at because it's so easy. And when something is so easy, you just assume everyone else can do it. And, and that's where it's like, if you're like, Oh, anyone could make 
anyone could explain a legal template, like obviously, that's when you know that's what you're really good at. And so, of course, it's kind of shocking to you to be like when people come back and say, that was so beautifully done. That was like amazing. That was the best part. Of course, you're like, what are you talking about? But, but I don't, no one else thinks like that, right? So you do. And that's how you can build, you literally built a business around these legal templates. Yeah. It, and then, then there's, there's other things that, so, and, and just listener, so, you know, my, my results say that I lead with influencing and that strategic thinking is my second domain. And even though strategic thinking are my top two strengths, are strategic thinking, but basically I kind of lead with those two areas. But there's other little interesting things in there that I think like we have to pick up on. Like the fact that my top two strengths are strategic and ideation explain one of the things that um, one, one, someone in my community, Kitty Bowman, says all the time, which is that I'm the king of analogies. Because those two things mean that I naturally see connections, and, and it's somewhere in those bullets, that I see connections between things that other people don't see. So like, you know, I see the connection between the marketing lesson I want to draw and, you know, my daughter saying something to me that other people just wouldn't get. And it's these little things that I've loved learning but also, we got to go back to the strength you were talking about, about communication. Um, and this is where I'm trying to get better because my communication talks about that I'm likely to, to tell stories and be good at telling stories. And so I have to recognize that as I'm teaching my email marketing program, other people won't naturally tell stories as well as I will, or, or it won't come as naturally to them. So I have to then take away and say, okay, and this is something we're really working on now is how do I kind of come up with prompts to help people? systematically do what I'm doing naturally. And I think that's an, an important lesson for people to take from this. Like you can't just assume that everyone thinks like you. Um, but any, I mean, what are other things that you see in my business that you're like, well, this just makes sense given the strengths that, that you know I have. And you could talk about my number four strength, <laughs> which has become a running joke with my team, uh, self-assurance. But we don't have to go there if you don't want to, Anna. Well, first with strategic thinking, so that's your number one, even in the first bullet point, you automatically pinpoint trends, notice problems, or identify opportunities many people overlook. Armed with this knowledge, you usually devise alternative courses of action. And so even the way when you have like your guru rants, it's like, oh, well, right there, there you go. That's like, that's why you think like that. Which is great because some people are would be like, oh, well, that person makes like multiple millions of dollars. So I can't go against saying what that person says, which then ties into self-assurance here, where self-assurance, for those who don't know, people with self-assurance feel confident in their ability to take risks and manage their own life. They have an inner compass that gives them certainty in your in their decisions. So the first bullet point, driven by your talents, you exude a natural confidence. You're calm and composed in a variety of situations, and you trust yourself to react appropriately regardless of the circumstances. And of course, you would be a really good lawyer because this would help contribute to that, not to mention you already have the other strengths to say to be a really good communicator. So you're not just self-assured because you're a jerk and have a big ego. You're self-assured because you're able to communicate these really big ideas in a way that people understand. Yeah. And I always joke about it, you know, that it's ego and that, but it's not really. And the interesting thing is like, when I look back on my life, and this is like the subtle shift that you helped me make is like, even beyond being a lawyer, like my, my practice as a lawyer was largely in places where I was gonna have to stand up. I was, I was a federal prosecutor for a while, which meant I would like be faced with stuff. I had like, I didn't have time to do the research. I didn't have time. I just had to make a decision on the fly when a judge is asking me a question and have confidence that I basically was probably right. You know, you can't be a hundred percent. And that's exactly when you explain that it's like, I have confidence in my general knowledge and those things. So I, I look at it, I'm just, it's funny that I literally put myself in those shoes. Um, but another thing I think we need to talk about, and this was like one of the greatest things of coaching with you. You didn't just coach me, you coached my team. And like some of the insights there, first of all, again, this may be my self-assurance speaking, <laughs> but I think of the movie, uh, The Recruit with Al Pacino, where he says, you got to give me this. I'm a scary judge of talent. 
And in a lot of ways, when you look at my team, I'm like a scary judge of having the right people in the right seats just naturally. Um, like those of you who listen, who know Bobby Joe, who's my community manager. She like, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen people who test this way as, as much, but I was just stunned. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, like seven of her top 10 are relationship building. It's like, hmm, what does that sound like to you there, there Anna? What, what, what kind of role should she be in? She should definitely be outward facing in your community for sure. Yeah. So her being in community, you know, the, the community manager and customer support just makes sense. But it also makes sense where like, if I'm doing customer support, you're probably getting a line and a half. If she's doing it, you're going to get a very empathetic, you know, so probably better that she's in that role. Um, and Katie was kind of a mix of everything, but str- strong and executing, which that's probably a good thing, huh? Yeah. Because then when you think about a team, you all complement each other really, really well. And so it, rather than being independent or dependent, you're interdependent, which is a much better way to have a team environment. And what was just so cool is working individually with Bobby, Joe, and Katie and yourself, but especially with Bobby, Joe, and Katie, they were able to really feel more confident moving forward in the positions that they already were doing a good job in, but they could clearly see like, oh, wow, this literally is what I should be doing. And just to have more confidence, right? Like I'm, and then of course you can get better at your different skills. Yes, I'm really good with people, but guess what? I've paid a lot of money to become better working with people by becoming a coach. So, and then to, to sit down and have everyone learn like, oh, this is how Bobby thinks. This is how Katie thinks. This is how Bobby Joe thinks. Then everyone can appreciate what each other brings to the table and say, how can we combine these tools to really bring this company forward? And that's exactly what happened. And I love that they were like, Bobby, we should have VIP days because for someone like you who has all of these ideas and is great at strategic thinking, when your business is a train and it's already on the tracks, you can't constantly be rebuilding tracks. Your team's going to go nuts. But if you can help lay the tracks for another fledgling business, you get to be fulfilled and another business gets to be influenced and they get to start moving forward in their own business. And your team is like, thank goodness he's occupied. We're going to keep pressing on with what our to-do list. Yeah. And I mean, I joked about that, that there's that expression, idle hands are the devil's play thing. And with me, it's even worse. I mean, it's, my team knows when I have too much time, all of a sudden they're just worried. And so I think that was part of it. But I think an important thing, and, and, and I saw this after we did the coaching that like, because I think um, you, you prepared this wonderful chart that showed each of our strengths, like, and Shelly, who's the newest person on our team was not on our team at the time, but she actually compliments brought more strategic thinking, which is actually, oh, it's one of my strengths. As a team, it was one, not one of our strengths. And so we kind of brought that in as well. And I mean, she, we were already on the way to hiring her. It happened to work out um, that way. But like, I think Bobby Joe seeing that and seeing that she is the relationship builder on the team, I think you're right. It gave her this confidence that, yeah, she'll naturally be better at this than me. And so, you know, it, it shouldn't be a question. And then Katie, likewise, seeing seeing the executing recognize that she is perfectly suited to take Bobby's crazy ideas <laughs> and figure out how we're going to execute them as a team. So um, I think it was I, like, I enjoyed my strengths coaching with you, but I have to say the team probably got way more out of it than I did, which it was amazing to see things that happened. Like you said, the VIP day was, was the best example of that. Um, so I think that was fantastic. And again, I keep telling you, you need to be, you, you could be helping everybody I know, every business person I know who has a team or not should be hiring you to get this done because it gave us incredible insight. So um, I appreciate it. So thank well, thank, it was, it was really fun. And I, and I think, I think that's the thing with assessments is that there are so many assessments you just kind of take and do on your own, sort of like we touched base on earlier, but like, you take an assessment, you're not really sure what to do with it. You put it on a shelf. And I think we greatly underestimate. And I think we just live in a world where we don't have many people who can sit down and say, listen, Bobby, you are really good at this. Like, let's see how we can make more of that happen. And 
And we underestimate how powerful just a conversation can be. And, and I've seen people like start taking notes 15, 20 minutes into a coaching session. And they're like, that's a really good idea. And they're writing things down. And it, this isn't like therapy where you need to go and process things for months and months on end, right? You can literally change your life in an hour conversation. Because when I coached your team and we were all together, it was one hour. And that one hour, how many thousands of dollars have you made now because of that one hour? A lot. Right. Literally. All of the VIP days that we've done are thanks to you and thanks to that. And again, there was some other things happening where I was getting to flex those muscles at the time, but it was my team knowing that where they pushed me to do it. So yeah, every, every dollar I've made from that was because of this coaching. So, you know. Not to mention, I think like, uh, especially in terms of team building, like the level of trust then that can happen. That is so important. Like, you can trust that Katie is going to tell you truthfully, this is a good idea. We're going to put this idea on hold and you're not going to mistrust her because now you can clearly see she's okay. She has your back. She wants you to succeed. And this is her strength. She's evaluating different ideas, or you can really trust that Bobby Joe is going to show up well for your community members. And likewise, they can trust that when you have ideas that they can trust that you'll trust them to like, weed them out and whatever. And I think that's so important because how many of us have worked in toxic work environments where you don't get to do the thing that you're really good at and like be interdependent with people. And that is like priceless. Well, and again, I think there's, there's, I want to pull out a a strand of wisdom there that, that I want a lot of people to get, which is, uh, and again, it could be that it's easier for me because of my self-assurance here. So I don't feel threatened, but I think a lot of people who are like the head of a business, they feel threatened by having other people. And, uh, you know, I think, I think you were there when I I did that, I did a training, uh, on team building. And, and one of the things I said is as you build a team, you're going to have to accept that there are other people who are going to know more about your business than you do. And that is a hard thing to do. Um, but it's, I I think, I, I hope that if people do this kind of work and get these kinds of like serious assessments done, they can really see, well, yeah, they're going to naturally do it better than me. So I should let go. Um, and I think that's like, you know, that's one of the things that can be an issue for a lot of people. And, and like you said, I mean, now like seeing it, I'm like, well, of course I should be letting them do all these things. And so that's another reason I would encourage people to, to kind of get this because it can help you let go. Um, but you're going to have to be willing to, right. And, and you're going to have to be, get over yourself and get over your ego. Uh, if this is ever going to work in building a team long-term. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, okay. Well, so other than, of course, you know, coming to hear you, you know, speak at, at you know, Badass Online Marketing Live, which you will be doing in early December. Uh, well, actually, before I get this, I want to ask, if you had a parting thought for people about this and about kind of how they should be thinking about their strengths and, and building a business around it, what would it be? It would be that all of the things like, we hear you have that special gift or what's your zone of genius, blah, blah, blah. And it is not, I show up to work on time. I'm a friendly person. Like it's so much deeper than that. And I would say, if you really want to have a, you know, we say this, if you want to have the business in life that you love or the business of your dreams, it's a lot of work to do it. So why not just start off with understanding how you think, feel, and behave So and how you help people. We're all, I'm assuming, in business, not only just to make money, but also because we want to help people. And if you want to help people, understand the way in which you are able to help people because there are people who do legitimately need your services. There are people in my, in our group coaching program where I, you know, I don't like the tech stuff, but our friend Melanie Howe is really good with the tech stuff. And guess what? I need her to understand what she brings to the online community space, online entrepreneurship space, because people are trying to figure out their tech and I'm not going to do it. I had a monitor sitting on my desk unopened and she was like, Anna, open up that box. I'm like, I'm real. I like, I was stre- sweating opening up the stupid box with this monitor. And she walked me through it. And she was like, I can't believe that was so hard for you. I'm like, but that's why you're really good at what you do. And so it's extremely important that if you want to have a business where you make money, you need to understand for yourself 
what it is you bring to the table, and then you can communicate that to others. And that doesn't mean that you're saying, I'm a maximizer. It means that you have language on a deeper level to say, hey, I'm a great coach because I, I don't look at people and say, wow, you have so many problems and here's where you need help. I look at someone and I say, do you know how much potential you have? This is amazing. Let's start from there. And so don't underestimate that you have really amazing talents. And when you understand that, and then you start adding skills and knowledge to make them strengths, and then in the online space, you build a business around that, you will have a business in life that you love because you're literally living out of what you already do naturally, and now you're just getting paid to do it. I, I think that is so fantastic. Um, I, I could add things, but I'm not going to because why would I? That, that was perfectly stated. So, uh, okay. So, where do people find you, Anna? Where can they go get more information about you? Um, because I think a lot of people are going to listen to this and say, I need to know what, what my strengths are. I need to figure out how to do this. So how can they do that? Sure. So I have my website, Anna Y Nelson, A-N-N-A-Y-N-E-L-S-O-N.com. And you can make an appointment, a two hour appointment right on my contact page to review your strengths. I'll walk you through that. And I have my own fledgling podcast called the Anna Nelson show. And I'm on Instagram at Anna Y Nelson on Facebook at Anna Y. Nelson and LinkedIn at Anna Y. Nelson. Yeah, you only have the best guests on your podcast, as I recall. That's right. So, yeah, exactly. And I think, like, other people, like, I'm built, like, I'm learning through you and my other cohort of online friends, like, how to do all the things I need to do in order to, like, move my business forward so that I can do what I'm good at. So, yeah, I'm really good at the coaching, but I'm learning how to do, like, how to do a podcast, how to do a social media post. Like that's all new for me. And we're all in the same boat together. And I think it's really cool that if we can all hold each other's dreams together and help each other move forward, then like what a wonderful thing. Like we make the world a better place by doing that. And we can't, we don't live alone. We need each other and we need to understand what we each bring to the table so that we can help others when they don't have the thing that we have. That is the best call to action I could hear. So listeners, I want you to hear that and recognize that all of us have a duty to, to bring our strengths to the table and uh, to help other people and to help other people in the ways we shine. So figure out what that is for you build a business around it. And that I, I truly believe will be the, the, it's not a secret, but the secret to success is doing just that. So that's it for this episode. And Anna, thank you very much for coming on. This was great. It was super fun. Thanks so much, Bobby. And listeners, I'll be back probably on Friday, but definitely next week. So see you then. That's it for this episode of the Certified Badass Online Marketing Podcast. Make sure to tune in next time. And in the meantime, go out and build the badass business of your dreams.